Hello, hello. Welcome to Therapist Take. We have another bonus episode for you today. This is a discussion that Carrie and I had about how do couples survive infidelity following the discovery of infidelity. And not only are they surviving, they're thriving. And it's not everybody. Not all relationships do survive from it, but there are relationships that do. And we had quite a discussion about it. We kind of broke it down into a few different uh, segments. And so, and one of my favorites is the power of paradox. So you got to make sure that you get to that portion of it and let us know what you think. Um, but also these, uh, even the bonus episodes, the live, the, the regular episodes, the bonus episodes are all recorded live on YouTube and you can go watch them on our YouTube channel. So check out the show notes. Also, the audio is kind of weird in this one, especially on my mic. It kind of glitches at times. I hope you just kind of bear with me through that. It's not too bad, but you probably will notice. And when we got to the portion where we were going to talk about resources, uh, the audio completely went out on Carrie and I both. I'll make sure in the show notes to put the resources that were mentioned so you can check those out. All right, let's get into it. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Therapist Take. Uh, we're glad to be back with another, hopefully, interesting and helpful mm-hmm. episode. Where we're going to talk about how do couples survive infidelity. It's probably one of the most common questions we get, I would say. Yeah, I think it is, too. Yeah. I think it's the biggest population that we also serve. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. it's also one of the most common questions I get from just friends and family or people we meet. Right. Uh, they're very curious about this idea that people actually do go in and get help uh, for uh, after a, a betrayal has been discovered, such as infidelity. Right. And they not only get help, they get better. Right. And they heal. Right. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, this idea of the reality of uncertainty. We're going to talk to you guys about the power of paradox, uh, the journey of self-discovery, and then the emergence of the new relationship. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. So let's go ahead and let's start with this idea of the reality of uncertainty. So when you hear me say that, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Is yuck. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We like certainty. Certainty feels good. We like pass fail. We like safe, unsafe. We Mm -hmm. like healthy, not healthy, binary, black and white. It's clear, right? Um, The saying I think of a lot when I'm talking about this with clients is ignorance is bliss, right? Not knowing is great. Knowing is uncertain. Um, How do I live with all this complexity, right? right? The older I get, the more I appreciate the idea of ignorance is bliss. Absolutely. Right. You, yeah. You fantasize about childhood innocence. Sure. And, right. You know, the biggest worry is, did you make me the right sandwich today? Yeah. Right. I mean, how many times have we talked about like, you know, I'm not sure if knowing is is all that great right. anymore. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like it seems like the more the more we know, the more knowledge we get, it's it's really what happens. I feel like is the world expands. Yeah. And so, yeah, the more you know means also means you're realizing there's so much more you don't know. Right. Right. You know, that sign and, of wisdom. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, it, and a, just a brief disclaimer here. I, I do believe it's important to know more. Uh, right. Uh, right. You know, um, but I, I definitely understand, uh, especially the older I get, the, the desire to uh, of those days where I was just a dumb kid Mm -hmm. you know in some in some aspects sure yeah um so we did talk about this on our last show where we talked about the submersible and and um, the reality of uncertainty and i'd encourage people uh, to go check that out and watch that because we spend a lot of time just talking about this but i thought it'd be helpful to just kind of briefly touch on it because that there are a few things that happen in our lives um, and I don't think it, I, I don't think it happens more than one or two times in, in all honesty, or I hope it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, that it just tips our world right. upside down on end, and, right. and what that means is that you know uh, the world expands really fast, yep. and we get really small, and we realize that the rules that we operate under that governed our lives um, they don't really fit anymore, mm-hmm. and it's what I always call it a uh, a house of cards philosophy to life. Right. So this is really common. I, I mean, I think most of us build this type of philosophy in the beginning because 
you know, we're ignorant to right. some extent. And and so um, each each rule that we have is kind of predicated on other rules and, you know, and all it takes is knocking one down, right. you know, disproving or challenging or something, one rule and the whole thing tumbles. Right. And I think usually those rules are fall into the always or never categories, right. which right. reflects certainty. Mm -hmm. So like my mm -hmm. partner would never cheat on me, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. or I would never do this or that. Right. And then all of a sudden this or that happens. Right. And now you're questioning everything. Well, and you know, kind of to give some specifics to that too, is the clients will say, I never thought my partner would do this. I never thought I would do this. And they also say things a lot like, I never thought I would stay with someone after yeah. they've done that. And so those are all statements that are reflecting this larger mm -hmm. construct that we're talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. the house of cards has fallen. And who I thought I was and what I thought I would do or what my partner would do is gone. Now I don't know what to believe mm -hmm. anymore, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's another one that resonates with me. The right. older I get is never say never. Right. You know, right. <clears throat> um, which is a paradox. Yeah. Oh, nice. We did. Right. Good never job. say never okay. is a paradox, mm -hmm. which which kind of takes us into our next uh, point. Yeah. The reason why we chose the title, how do couples survive True. instead of do couples, they, can they? do they right. or can they, right? right? How do they do it? Because mm -hmm. they, yes, they're doing it. Right. You know, the research really shows that yeah. most people stay together after there's been some kind of yeah. you know, intimate deception, mm -hmm. cheating, whatever you want to call it, right? That most mm -hmm. of them do, but do most of them are most of them happier? Yes, yeah. That's what we're that's what we're here for is to do do the work right. so that you go you know you can kind of move more towards being happy and healthy right. versus um, right. staying married. So can you survive? Would be a very simple some yes, some no. But how do you survive yeah. it? and and thrive and right? thrive and be maybe maybe mm -hmm. yeah. closer. Sure. And what and what we can say anecdotally from the work that we're doing, I, I mean, I, I think we can even say this uh, uh, from the empirical evidence. Empirical sure. evidence, mm -hmm. yeah. That that there, yes, there are lots of couples that are surviving and thriving. Yes. Uh, yeah. Post affair. Sure. You know, and there are some that don't. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and we can attest to that too. Sure. Uh, so, you know, the and so people have a hard time imagining like. And like, uh, you know, I think sometimes when I get that question from like friends or family or somebody that I meet and ask mm -hmm. me what I do for a living, you know, and they're like, wow, so people s can survive that. It's mm -hmm. like, the, you know, I think a lot of times they're probably imagining, you know, would I be able to yeah, do right. that with I my partner? So. Because right. I think in our culture, we have made infidelity like the worst thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't want to downplay it as not a bad thing. It is bad and it will probably always land someone in our office space to help them right. work through it. But so I, I remember growing up hearing, you know, a lot of religious giants in, in my life saying, you know, uh, you know, everything's about forgiveness, 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 forgiveness. But if, uh, if my partner ever cheated, you know, I'm, I'm out the door, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, as you said, uh, I think when, when that happens to people, I think that's also one of the things they said they never, uh, that's what you said, they'll yeah. never stay. They yeah. come in our office like, I feel, I feel foolish for being here. Oh, foolish. Right? Absolutely. So, you know, but what, you know, it, it creates this reality of uncertainty for a lot of people. They don't know up from down, left or right. right. And uh, one of the things that we'll often talk to them about pretty early on in session is this concept of the power of paradox yeah. um, because I'm a big believer that mental health and relational health are found in paradoxes yep. mm -hmm. you know and so so they kind of have to look for it so one of my favorite paradoxes to tell couples it's probably not fun to hear in no. the beginning because they don't understand it but they start to understand it as we go through the process and that paradox is it says uh, if you're not willing to lose each other you're not ready to have each other mm -hmm. what, what does that mean yeah. are you asking me those yeah, are your words are, those are, yeah. shouldn't those come from you <laughs> right well it, it it's as far as what we you said this is kind of early on um for people that are trying to recover from this 
it's the idea that this event or a series of events has been so world shattering, right? Changing mm -hmm. that you're going to have to individually kind of figure out how this has changed you, figure out what's important to you and be willing to put that out there and risk perhaps that that's not going to be okay for the relationship. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think the key word there is risk. Risk. You know. Sure. And and I think as we get we get when we get to the point of the journey of self discovery, mm -hmm. I think this will kind of start to come together a little bit. But yeah, that's what you're talking about is you know like there's um, if you think about it in terms of like your your infrastructure just imploded. Yeah. You know, your your house of cards just fell. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not the relational house of cards. It's like my individual, yes. the, the way I make sense of the world just collapsed, mm -hmm. like that whole paradigm. And uh, so it makes sense. And i got to rebuild my paradigm, right? And so there's a lot of, uh, of individual work, introspective work, mm -hmm. um, and trying to get your footing and start to what I call rebuild your black and white. I mean... Most of life happens, in, in my opinion, in the gray, but our black and white is the infrastructure to, that contains our gray. And right. when people discover something like that their partner had an affair, it's like the, the, a, a tornado just blew their walls down right. and everything's just spilling out everywhere mm -hmm. and there's nothing to contain um, their gray. Right. You know? Right. And so, you know, uh, and so as part of that journey, like, is that I'm. I'm, I'm putting that spotlight on myself to rebuild that and there's here we go with uncertainty again there's so much mm -hmm. uncertainty of will this this version of myself that people kind of often re relate to like this new version which is really the same you with a new set of rules you know will this version of me be compatible or be able to right. work with the new version of my partner and that's what's so scary yeah. But if you if you're not willing to risk that, uh, then you're likely going to try to recreate the old relationship, and we know where that led to, you right. know. Right. And so, you know, so when we say if you're not willing to lose each other, you're not ready to have each other. It's because I have to risk losing this relationship to rebuild this. To give it the best right, rebuild, myself to yeah. give our relationship the best chance of right. uh, working, and really, it's giving myself the best chance of being with my partner. Because as we're going to talk about in the fourth point, is that it's actually a new relationship. So, what does this look like for clients when when they're coming in, and and you're kind of like having to point out paradox or you know create constructs that can help them through this? Um, I, I, I experience a lot of deer in the headlights with that particular paradox right. um, because w which which kind of tells me I'm on the right track that's one of the it's an indicator, because yeah. if it made sense to them they would have already tried it right, right. right and so one of the things we do as therapists is we're we're trying to you know we're trying to help them navigate the world of uncertainty right, right? so right. we don't know if the relationship's going to work we don't know the specific unique formula that works right. for that couple. We have to help them figure that out. Right. Um, so when I hear someone say, I don't know what to do, I I feel lost, I feel like like I was like at least we're looking in the same in the right direction. Right. Right. right? Sure. I wish I could tell them I know exactly what you need to do. I can't mm -hmm. tell them that. And and if if I did tell them that, I would tell them to, to they should leave and never come back. Right because I'm presenting them certainty again. Right, right. Right, and, right. and that's what they, it, that, that would just be an illusion at that point. Right, well, and I think to kind of, you know, add to that deer in the headlights experience, for a lot of the clients that I work with, I, I'm often seeing the person who was betrayed, and they'll say things like, I, I, I need to ask for a formal disclosure, right, which means mm -hmm. that the person tells them you know everything that has happened, all the secrets kept. Or um, I need to ask for them to give me space when I'm upset. Whatever these specific things are, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if the you know the risk is that I don't know if my partner will understand. I don't know if my partner will be willing to do that. 
Um, and that's where the paradox is. If you don't ask, if you don't share what you need, then you'll never get what you need. Right. But if you put out there what you need, you, the person, it may be clear to you, they're not willing to do the mending mm -hmm. that this relationship requires, right? And so right. that's where that paradox is. You'll mm -hmm. never get where you want to go unless you're willing to say, this is where I stand, this is mm -hmm. what I need. But yeah. you may, it may be revealed that the relationship won't withstand mm -hmm. that, yeah. right? And yeah. that's, you know, that's the paradox of, you're going to have to risk, can it make it, in mm -hmm. order for it to actually have the best chance to make it. Right. Just one more uh, paradox, then we'll move on, just to kind of illustrate uh, that it comes up a lot, is just this concept of selfishness. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because basically a lot of couples that uh, are coming in, in uh, are in codependent relationships. And I think, I believe that probably uh, most couples in an American culture are enter into their relationships in the beginning uh, in a codependent state, uh, largely because I think uh, it's very much encouraged by um, a lot of different aspects of our culture, like a religious culture, Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, like the, you know, yeah, the whole general. romanticizing mm -hmm. the relationship, you know, like the Jerry Maguire, you complete me as if you're not even a complete person before you meet your partner. Right. And then you get absorbed by that. So a lot of it's breaking free of that and and it feels like I'm being selfish, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what I'll say is like, what if you're actually being selfless? What if taking care of yourself is a selfless act? Sure. You know, because uh, when you take care of yourself uh, first, that's good. Mm -hmm. You're keeping your tank full, right? Right. right. And then there's that, the common metaphor right. or the... I guess not a metaphor. I mean, something actually happens. It's when you, actual, yeah. <laughs> when you get on a plane and they, uh, you know, it may say like, parent, basically talking to parents or people who have dependents saying, mm -hmm. if the thing comes down, which hopefully it Oxygen won't, mask. you know, yeah. and please, you know, make sure you put yours on first before you put it on others. others because basically if you pass out while you're putting yours on, not you're not going to be able to help anybody. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't think we think too far beyond that because all I'm thinking about is, Wait, are those, <laughs> those, those things going to come down? Right, right. What does that mean? Right. <laughs> we got some bigger problems here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's, uh, I think that that uh, situation resonates with people. Oh, yeah, they yeah. do tell you to do that. Right. You know? And I think that this is also similar to, it's a hard to deprogram the things we've learned from our culture sure. to say that selfless. Right. Sure. Absolutely. And so, you know, the, and I think this is really true for parents, right? That the more you take care of yourself, the better mm -hmm. parent you can be. But it feels like the more you give to your kids, the better parent that you are. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so you definitely see this in recovery and um, between couples of having yeah. to say, well, I've got to speak up. I've got to say what I need. And that's the best way to demonstrate actually being selfless. Right. Mm -hmm. I would, I really would encourage people watching this to, to go to our YouTube channel and look at some of the videos because we've there's so much on this and we've done we've got like right. hundred something videos on there that it covers all these different aspects and we've got plans to even do more uh, but also our website which is familysolutionsok.com and check out our blog but I'll, I'll make sure to put some links in there because there's you know we we did that blog called transitional on right. transitional distrust. Right. There's another one called reflection on a uh, concept called reflection aggression. We've written quite a bit on some of these things uh, that goes a little bit more into detail about certain sp or specific aspects right. of it. Right. I'll make sure to put those links in the description or in the comments. Um, but uh, please go peruse those because I want to just keep talking about this and there's just not going to be we enough can. time. Right. So check those right. out as the addendums yeah. and to be continued. And I also wanted to give a disclaimer to you because uh, I wanted I didn't want people to think that. When I said earlier, like if you if you don't rebuild your infrastructure by uh, through this journey that you take, then you uh, might rebuild. You likely will, will gravitate toward what's familiar and rebuild the old one, and that leads you here. I do want partners to. Re I want to recognize the partners who have yeah. been uh, cheated on, uh, who have whose partners have been unfaithful. Uh, that uh, it's uh, you didn't make that happen like you know that's not your fault in any way shape or form uh, th you know how we choose to deal with our stuff is always on us 100 percent. Right. so right. I just want to put that out there to yeah. say I'm not 
I'm never am going to blame the victim right. on that situation. Absolutely. So yeah, appreciate that. But that kind of leads us into so we, we talked about this. You know, people are faced with this abrupt shift in their paradigm, which throws them into this world of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And then we talk about the power of paradox and how that is important uh, in the pursuit of health and healing, Mm -hmm. which leads people down into this (laughs) journey of self-discovery. Whether they like it or not. Right. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's really true. It is true. Yeah. Yeah. At least uh, people coming to our office are buying in to some degree because they're here. Right. Sure. But, um, you know, I think the journey of self-discovery is um, know thyself, right? That's the point. Um, But Mm -hmm. this isn't a chosen discovery. This is life threw it at you for the for the partners that have been, you know, experienced the betrayal. And so they didn't say, hey, I'd really like to grow. I'm going to go take a class or I'm going to go on a religious excursion and Mm -hmm. learn more about myself. The world changed. Right. This traumatic event happened and they're forced to discover things about themselves. They're forced to be changed in perhaps ways that they didn't that are that are not yeah. good or not flattering they right? you know kind of the metaphor of scars right mm-hmm. oh absolutely um i mean it's scary because it's I, th- I think a lot of what makes it scary is the never thing again you know mm-hmm. like uh i never thought i would question my faith i never thought i would question my my if i wanted to be married mm-hmm. you know or uh, but it's it's uh, from it's top to bottom. It so it's like if people are sure. questioning their careers. Yep. Uh, they're like I said, their faith. Uh, they, you know, even you know, if you're a parent that loves your children, that's probably going to remain the same. But you'll probably think very heavily on how you parent, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, what you know, like if you, it's like why am I giving myself so much crap? You, you might be a whole lot better on the other side of this at shame-free parenting. Right. It sounds like a good book. Oof, it does. Shame-free parenting. Sounds like a good way to live. <laughs> sounds like another episode. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> no, I, don't, I think it's built in. <laughs> no. Uh, so, I, I, you know, so the journey of self-discovery, that, that's something. Who wouldn't want to do that? Sure. Lovely. Let's read a book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a lot. Uh, there's a reason we don't. That's right. You know, because and, it's painful. This is discovery sure. through pain. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and there's, and I think intuitively they know there's more pain. Yeah. There's more loss. Yeah. And when uh, a lot of times the the mentality of the couple when they're they're working the, their recovery and they sometimes they'll get kind of restuck is that the partner, the one, the injured partner is thinking I've already lost so much yeah yeah and the the unfaithful partner is thinking I've already hurt them so much. I've already brought on so much pain and loss like right. you're in this journey is like there's more yeah and there is and, and know, this is part in the of, beginning yeah. And, yeah. and part of I like that you you know went to describing it is a different journey for each person sure. right because the person who stepped out of the relationship has to ask, you know, what kind of person am I to do this? How did I do this? Where did this come from? What does this mean? What does this say about me? That's a painful, right, um, yeah. examination. And I, I think, though, those are really important questions because sometimes, sometimes being unfaithful reveals a poor decision, mm-hmm. a poor moment. Sometimes the mm-hmm. unfaithful behavior reveals wounds yeah distortions and it can it include all of those things and a lot more and so that is incredibly rich information and for the person who was betrayed um, the self-discovery is what did I think was safe how can I learn to trust myself how can I recover feeling foolish Mm -hmm. and all of those questions are normal and really healthy and adaptive but yeah. it is an ex- often, I mean, the word I keep thinking is it's often an excruciating experience to actually examine these things. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, it's, and that's in the beginning phase. Like, everybody knows that they, they want to be happy they, or at peace right. at minimum, right? I right. just, I want the pain to stop, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, but, and like, but they just intuitively know in the beginning, it's not, you know, to get there, to get to the goal, there's just this, this painful yeah. process. And, one of the stories that I use sometimes with people is that if you're 
uh, I tell the story about, you know, picture a guy who's, uh, you know, on a park bench and uh, there's a, it's, it's, it's at night, at night and uh, there's a light, like a street lamp type light over him that's casting a bit, a circle uh, around him in the park bench. And he is on his hands and knees um, searching through the grass and he's lost something. Right, and a guy walks up to him and sees that he's lost something. He's like, "Sir, I've seen. I can tell you, you've lost something. You know, is there something I can help you find?" And he's like, "Yeah, I lost my keys, and I'm looking for my keys." He's like, "Okay, well, I'll help you find." So, he, so he gets on his hand and knees, and they're combing through every inch of this grass and this, this uh, uh, where the light has cast um, uh, near the park bench. And after they basically comb every inch of it in kind of a, a moment of exhaustion the other guy stands up and he's like all right let's let's retrace your steps you know it's like do you remember where you were when you dropped them and the guy said oh yeah he's like i was over there and he points to an area that's not in the light it's way out in the dark and the guy's like well why aren't you looking over there and he's like well because this is where the light is mm. you know and He's gonna he's gonna have to he's gonna have to venture out of that area that feels safe mm-hmm. and comfortable and into this darkness. Mm-hmm. And who knows what you're gonna find out there, mm-hmm. right? So, sorry for the buzzing. It's, uh, you hear my phone go off. It's yeah, okay. We'll sorry. keep going. Sorry. Yeah, it's alright. The show must go on. <laughs> the show must go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you, you know. Yeah, it's a great illustration. Great. It is, and I guess the reason we've included it as one of our points is not just because um, it's what we do all day, but it really, it is how you survive this. You, you kind of have to let this change you and discover things about you. Um, It's painful, but you also discover incredible amounts of wisdom, right? Acceptance, um, peace. Um, And so I just kind of want to make sure that when we talk about this and we're using words like excruciating and hard, yeah. But it's it's necessary, we think, to helping couples rebuild. Because right. <clears throat> even if this was, this, you know, infidelity was a one-time thing that doesn't say much about mm. the partner's state of, you know, each person's state of mind or the quality of the relationship, which can happen and does happen sometimes in, in that, um, it still is an injury, right? Yeah. And so how do we get hurt and where does it hurt? And what does this mean for us? Those are uh, required adaptive questions mm-hmm. in order to heal. Yeah. Um, and if uh, th- these are the reason why, you know, sometimes we, we might hear us say some of those harder words. Uh, it's because it, it's that's probably the most difficult part of the journey. Yeah, right. So. Um, but what's really neat is when we get to experience this uh, this last point that we want to make yeah. is the emergence of the new relationship and mm-hmm. it's 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 like a you know a, I don't know a, a butterfly trying to mm-hmm. you know work its way out of the cocoon you know it takes some time okay. some doing and it doesn't happen all at once um, but it's neat to start to watch that to form because right. there's like kind of a nice little blend of of conflict and intimacy uh-huh. you know and i i kind of think of it as like it's like the couple's learning to dance a mm-hmm. new dance and i don't know if you guys have ever had dance lessons i have it's it's actually i mean i, I hats off to you if you <laughs> dance if you did do dance lessons because i'm like i don't bend that way <laughs> you know and my wife and i'm like stepping on my wife's feet you know i'm like you know that's a thing it's real <laughs> especially when you got size 13 shoes yeah, you know boots. and so um you know it's it's not easy and then mm-hmm. remembering you know that the new it's learning a new dance it is. together and uh, there's a new there are new moves and new rules and uh, things hurt in different ways yeah. and things feel good in different ways right. and and um uh, but uh that's you know when I think uh, the you know the couple starts to realize uh, what well, well probably before the paradox about not w- willing to lose each other if you're not ready to have each other I mean if you're not willing to lose each other you're not ready to have each other that probably starts to they really start to understand that concept probably in that journey of self discovery but I think they start understanding um, how that type of approach is plays into this new relationship 
you know, because there isn't, we're not, we are bringing, uh, blending our two worlds together, but we're not getting absorbed in, we're not letting the individual selves getting, get absorbed in this new relationship right, right. that we have. We're two people and a relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as we talk, like in our, our paper we wrote on uh, transitional distrust, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you say like, how does a couple trust again? You know, it's it's not by polygraphs, and I'm not telling people not to have polygraphs. Mm -hmm. It's don't do the trick. <laughs> right. It's not from, you know, uh, being able to access every piece of information right. that you guys have on one another and right. and staying, you know, that connected or following the mm -hmm. being on each other's coattails. It's not from that. It's because you. It's a completely different way of operating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with one another it's yeah. a new dance and, it, and if anything looks like the old dance they're probably not going to trust it very much right it's got to look new right and, and be new yeah i think that's a great way of saying it too it's got to be new and that doesn't mean you have to move out of your house or get new jobs or you know yeah. take on new identities but it means that things feel like they're coming from a different place i think we often use the idea we've used tons of metaphors today i know but <laughs> that you know you're knocking down the house that was was something bad happened to it right mm -hmm. and we have to pour a, f a good foundation and build up from there right mm -hmm. and, and so it, maybe it's the same house in the same place but it's built differently right, right. and oh, so yeah. this new relationship it's different in this relationship we support each other's individuality right in this mm -hmm. relationship we value time together in this relationship we take care of our children but we make room for us in this right. new relationship we um, we can live with the fact that I can't control or have complete access and complete information mm -hmm. to everything because even if I did, it still wouldn't make me feel yeah. completely safe. And we can say those things and they may not sound perfect, but they're sad. <laughs>have it another bonus episode of therapist take thank you for listening to our podcast i hope you'll go check out the show notes and check out all the links and resources that are listed there and please don't forget to give us that five star review and leave us some kind words if you want to it really helps please the algorithm gods and we want to try to get this podcast into as many hands as possible we really appreciate you and see you back next time